Hello, everyone. Welcome into another episode of the Four Quarters Podcast, powered by Four Quarters Media. I'm your host, Tyler Bennett, here with you once again. Episode 15 is on tap. And before we get into what's on tap in episode 15, it's July 20th when this releases. Most of Ontario has now reached stage three of the reopening process, I guess you call it a process. Hopefully, everyone stays safe. It's a big jump. Most things are going to be open now. Gatherings increase. We're another week closer to live sports on TV. Times are they're exciting right now. We're we're slowly creeping back towards a state of normalcy, but we can't get complacent. Keep doing our part, wear masks, social distance, whatever. But this is a step in the right direction. Unfortunately, I'm in a city, a region that's stuck in phase two. I'm okay with it. It is what it is. You can't change it. Much rather have my health than anything else right now. Episode 15 of the podcast is on tap with a point guard who ended up leading or becoming the all-time leading scorer in the Pac West. And he's admittedly, as you'll say in the chat, a pass first guard. Ended up with 1,459 points over his five-year career with the Douglas Royals. Grant Campbell joins the podcast, who is also playing or played professionally over in Italy before COVID-19 hit. And that's kind of the focus of episode 15, is how COVID affected his season, how it affected his travel back. To Canada which he said was stressful and wasn't without its own hurdles to try and overcome we looked at Grant's transition from Douglas College to the professional ranks he coached for a year under head coach Joe Envoldson before he went off to Fraser Valley at the end of this past season and now Grant took his talents to Italy this past year, kind of looked at that transition, kind of the pros, the cons, the positives, and the challenges that he had to endure. One, as I'm sure you can guess off the top, language was a big thing. And just kind of what he did to keep busy and what life was like in Italy for him. And just the transition from collegiate ball in Canada to professional, kind of mentally, physically, emotionally, what that does to a person. It's not as glamorous as it sounds. It's not all sunshine, lollipops, rainbows, unicorns. It's it's a grind. And Grant tells it how it is. So let's jump right in to episode 15 of the Four Quarters podcast powered by Four Quarters Media with former Douglas College Royals star turned professional basketball player, Grant Campbell. Enjoy. All right, so I'm now thrilled to be joined by former Douglas College Royals guard and current, well, not current, obviously we're on a pause right now, current professional, Grant Campbell. Grant, I want to thank you for doing this. How are things uh, on your end out on the West Coast? Oh, I mean, thanks, thanks for having me. Appreciate the the interest. Um, no, out here things are things are looking pretty good. Um, yeah. You look at everywhere around the world, and um, yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty grateful that I'm I'm living where I am in BC mm-hmm. on the West Coast because you look around even on the East Coast of Canada, and yeah, they're a bit they're a bit behind where we are, and yeah. especially other parts of the world are are they're they're struggling right now, you know, and I'm just glad that. I'm living where I am in BC and yeah. hopefully, you know, we can all like stay strong and get through this. 
you know, whenever that may be. Yeah. So I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing as good as can be for sure. Yeah. I think all things considered, mm-hmm. we're doing okay. Like we said before we came on here, like Ontario, we just got, we just announced that stage three happens on the 17th and I'm in one of the 10 cities. that's not stage three. <laughs> Yeah. So we're just kind of trucking along here in our groups of 10. And <laughs> when my wife works out of town and a group of one, it's, it's yeah. kind of lonely in a circle of 10 when you're the only person, but yeah, I I'd know. much rather have health than have the option to go to a movie theater if I want to, or eat at a restaurant. But yeah, definitely. definitely. There, there are days where you're just, you just itching to do anything. And yeah. It's, it's tough. It is can't. tough. Yeah. That's the, that's the thing. It's the, the combination of the uncertainty of what mm-hmm. life's going to look like maybe even like a month from now. Right. We don't know. I think that's the, the worst part is, you know, like we don't know, but people up top, like prime minister, they don't know what, what's going to happen. No idea. Now, you know, so if they don't know, how are we supposed to know? So, right. It's just the uncertainty of, you know, what life's going to look like, yeah. um, what's going to be open, what's going to be available, what's not going to be available, just all that. Um, yeah, and it was just um, for it to be the start of the new decade as well. Everyone was pretty excited right. for 2020, the new decade. Every, and then it's just every, every single, month has had something different. Yeah, it's just just haven't haven't gotten a lot of good news this year so far unfortunately no, so no kobe's death <laughs> kind of just started everything it just opened uh-huh. up the One, floodgates yeah. and every month it's been something new yeah. and knock i'm not going to say it i was going to say something about july <laughs> not going to do it we're yeah. We're in the clear right now. Yeah, we're all, we're all positive vibes right now. We're positive up. vibes only. And I'm so thankful. Positive. Like This put everything into perspective. So thankful to live in Canada because, mm-hmm. like you said, everywhere else in the world isn't doing as well. Maybe yeah. New Zealand. Obviously, they just shut it out completely. Like, they're in the yeah. clear. But there are places that don't need to be named because you know exactly where it is. Yeah that aren't doing as well to say the mm-hmm. least. And yeah, if their leaders don't know what's going on, when people tell them what to do, yeah. there's an issue. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. So, yeah. So I think just hopefully whenever this ends, like we can all just come out of it better than when, how we came into it. That's how that, I'm looking at it. That's you know, just use it as a, Mm-hmm. Like just, everything's been put into perspective, and hopefully, mm-hmm. you know, people have learned some things about themselves and about their lives and stuff. So, mm-hmm. hopefully, if, they can construct that into like a positive thing moving forward at the at the other end of all this. It's crazy. If stuff, so. if you come out of this and one, you didn't learn anything about yourself, and two, you don't have a better perspective on things in life, what have yeah. you been doing? This is. Yeah everything literally shut down mm-hmm. for three months Once, yeah. and I don't know. I think I've said it a few times on here. I think this is the year that we needed to have mm-hmm. to put everything into perspective, bring the fight against social injustice to the limelight and address the issues mm-hmm. that are going on in the world that just go unnoticed. And yeah, shows what really matters in the world. I think this is the year we needed to have. And if you come out of this the same way you went into it, there's a special place in hell for you. (laughs) Reserved seat whenever you get there. Yeah. Yeah, People might get mad at that, but that's okay. I don't care. Yeah. No, it's, it's true though. It is true. You know, if, like as tough as like this year has been, right? Like the the biggest like learn um, you learn the most from times of adversity yep. and, un- and when you're uncomfortable, you know. So I don't yep. think, especially I know my generation's never been this uncomfortable, 
you know no. so this is definitely the toughest year i think my generation's had so you know hopefully because i already, i talk to my buddies all the time like when we have kids and grandkids like yeah 2020 is going to be that's going to be the year like we talked about it's going to be like the like the great depression and stuff like that. right it's going to be a, a thing like oh i was living through 2020 during covid or whatever like that time you know so yeah so hopefully just after yeah. this covid stuff some just as like a society and yeah. as a public we just come out of it you know it, has, better. it keeps it's going in a better direction yeah you know? we just we, we can't go backwards we got to just keep moving progressing forward yeah. i don't care how mm-hmm. steep of an angle that progression is as long as it's upwards forward yeah. and upwards mm-hmm. n- i'm not looking back at this year i don't want to yeah uh, it, no. It's, no yeah no. until like you said until you have kids and they are old enough to understand it mm-hmm. this is the year that isn't talked about yeah ever again unless yeah. something good comes out of it with again the social injustice and the equality gets mm-hmm. to where it needs to be talk about that all day long yeah that's the stuff you talk about I don't want to talk about anything else. Just yeah, <laughs> arrest the cops, do whatever, get equality to where it needs to be. No. And that's all I want to talk about. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, nothing else. Nope. <laughs> what have you been doing to keep busy? I've seen on Instagram you've been golfing a little bit. Uh, what have yeah. you, been doing you got back to Canada. What have you been doing just to kind of keep saying, keep busy? And obviously with no basketball, it's – a little bit tougher, a lot more dry, yeah. if you will. But yeah, definitely. the game's coming back eventually. Yeah, end of the month. It's, but I way, yeah, I think it's way. Um, but um, yeah, yeah. I know, like the like the first few weeks that I got back, that's when it was. I think it was at probably its peak. So yeah. literally, there was nothing to do, um, which I didn't mind because, um, especially. Over in Italy at the time, things were not Oof. looking great. So no. once I once I got back on the home soil, I've I have never been more grateful and relieved in my life. Right. Like yeah. when I saw when I saw my parents, it was <laughs> like I'll be honest. Like I I was I was crying with my parents. Yeah. I was crying when I saw them. Like I won't lie about that, you know. And it was just so I took that time to just hang out with them. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, they were still able to work from home. Okay, um, so they were still able to work, yeah, along with my sister as well. But mm-hmm. um, I was just, yeah, I was just hanging out with them, telling about my my experience there, and just yeah. you know, coming back. Um, even before like COVID hit, like I I had learned so much and just put into perspective of like how important family is. Mm-hmm. You know? So um so yeah after the first few weeks um once things kind of started to slowly open up yeah uh i was just i've been hanging out with a lot of buddies a lot of friends mm-hmm. um because obviously i didn't see them for a long long amount of time so yeah. hanging out with them i think we what are we doing we had we've had some like campfires and stuff okay and yeah campfires uh i'm sorry seriously when summer hits i'm starting to get into the gulf yeah like pretty pretty heavily yeah like me and my buddies we go maybe one to two times a week okay i think we're gonna go even more okay um because uh yeah no i think because um i've been i've been interested in golf the last Mm -hmm. couple years yeah um but i wasn't very good so the motivation wasn't really there to to keep it going right yeah uh, the more i've done it i mean i'm doing i i like to think i'm I'm doing pretty good right now. Hey, it's that. It's all about that no. forward progression. Doesn't matter how steep exactly. the angle is, as long as you're getting better every time. Exactly. And uh, without, I mean, basketball or any sports happening, I need. Mm-hmm. I just need to fuel. Like there's a fire. I need to play something and yeah. you know, try some to sort of competition. Yes, I yeah. need something to to fill those like competitive juices. So yeah. golf's been. Golf's been, golf's been a good outlet, and it's, it's a good time with the boys and everything. It's a really good time. So, um, yeah, other than that. Trying to find ways to keep busy. Yeah, I mean, I've been working out a lot in the, okay. in my yeah. garage. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm limited on, limited on equipment, unfortunately. Right. But yeah. 
you know, you got to, especially nowadays, you just got to make use of what you got. Exactly. You know, make, the, make the best of it. So, yeah, just it's a lot of cons- that. Just, yeah. I think everybody's in the same boat. Just kind of find what you can. Like for you, like mm-hmm. obviously you said not seeing your family or friends for a while, like just like having those campfires just to shoot the breeze and catch up and yep. whatever. Like those are easy to socially distance and golf the same way. So it's like mm-hmm. there's ways that you can do things, but do it safely. Yeah. And yeah, I like guess just, Oh, and to, to top it off, like we're not in stage three, we have a fire ban, so you can't have fires. No. It's like, it's just yeah. like 2020 just, <laughs> it just rains. Yeah. And when it rains, it pours. I guess that's the negative for July for out here, I guess fire ban. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. I just thought of that too. Like, this is terrible. It's just getting worse yeah, it, and worse. Yeah. It just seems like there's just nothing to look forward to. Nothing, no positive news, no, no, Hockey's sure. coming back. The NHL is supposed to start July twenty eighth. Mm-hmm. NBA starts the thirtieth, I think. Yeah. The CEBL starts yeah. middle of the month, I think. I think so. Yeah. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully, mm-hmm. all three of those go off without a hitch. There is. There is. They fall through. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm nervous for the NBA. I'm not going to lie. Uh, a little nervous with Rashawn Holmes breaking the bubble to get delivery food. Like, yeah. really? Come on now. Yeah, and the first day. Well, right? Exactly. Like, of all days, the first day, come on. Like, yeah. at least give it a bit. Give it a bit. Give it at least <laughs> two days. Like, give the food another try. Yeah. Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of, a lot of memes about the food. <laughs> Making fun of the food and stuff. Yeah, but, but then you um, get to Mark Carroll, who says this is like this is what like home cooking is, and I'm like, hey, so I, this looks decent. Like I'd be yeah. okay with this. Yeah. If somebody gave me this and I didn't have to make it, I'm I'm all over that. Yeah, but like also like keep in mind we're we're not living the million not, dollar not, life. Not a chance. It's not, you know, so they're used to getting five star meals handed yeah. to them every day. So, but then yeah. was it? Was it Rondo who made fun of a Motel 6 or Motel 8 or whatever with his room? Was that who it was? Cause someone put on is it Instagram or Snapchat or something. I thought it was Rondo. Right. And Karma bit him in the rear and now he broke his thumb. Oh, yeah, I know. So for a few weeks. don't bite the hand that feeds you, I guess. Don't, yeah. don't mock the NBA and then look what happens. You're Goes out around, comes six. around. Exactly. I mean, I'm, like that. I'm out here thinking these rooms look nice for vacation. And I'm like, oh, this yeah. is nice. Like, this <laughs> yeah. is rooms that I wouldn't even pay for. And yeah, definitely. They walk in and this is it. This yeah. is what we get. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, uh, it puts in, puts in perspective. And that's why I'm, I'm interested to see yeah. um, how the guy, how the, the players, the pros, like, respond to these, like, living mm. environments you know mm. in this these playing conditions because i think some of them will will thrive because yeah it's almost like it's all away games like no one's at home right. no one has those home distractions really yep. i mean obviously there's a big, big distraction obviously yeah but yeah. no one has those those at home those distractions you would get at home so right. guys might be super locked in you might see the best of best versions of guys and i hope so i hope so too um but then other guys just might not care. Yeah, they might yeah, they might just sink, you know, kind of thing. So Yeah. It'll be I'm very interested to see. I mean, on top of obviously just seeing um competitive sport being played on, on T V right. being able to watch. You know, but yeah. hopefully we get a we get a good product. Hopefully. Yeah. I'm I'm excited to see. Like we're we're recording this on I don't know what the date is today. Uh Ju- July fourteenth. Okay. And I was scrolling through the TV earlier and they had live baseball and I almost, mm. I had to double look and I was like, it's the Jays inner squad. I don't, I'm not a Jays right. fan. I can't stand them. Scrimmage kind of thing. But at the same time, just to see a sporting event with the word live beside it, 
on the TV screen. Yeah. On the TV. It was, it was glorious. <laughs> and you yeah. turn it on and it's like, you don't know the result. You haven't seen this game played before. Right. This is live. It's happening. This right is now. Christmas in July. This is yeah. fantastic. Definitely. And then I shut it off because it's the Jays and I don't care. But just <laughs> to know that live yeah. sport is here and it's coming again. Yeah. That's all I needed. Yeah. I think, um, I think it was sometime in, I think, April. Um, I was just I was just on the couch and my dad, he was flicking around the TV and he saw, um, I think it was like professional like arm wrestling on TV. And we sat down and watched it. We watched it because – there was nothing. There was actually some sort of competition yeah. happening on the TV screen. So we're like, that's all I need. I'm in. Let's Just watch it. Anything competitive that you don't know a result to, I'm all for. I'm like, I've watched I'm more German soccer than ever. I can sit and watch golf all day long. So I, mm-hmm. to me, that's no different. Like, I don't consider that anything I've been mm-hmm. deprived of because it's been on for three or four weeks. But yeah. seeing like a baseball game or basketball or hockey like oh yeah, this yeah. has been a long three and a half months home four yeah. months now i guess it was march 13th i think when everything shut down mm-hmm. no it feels like a lot longer for sure it feels like it's gone quick but it feels like it's been so long at the same time like yeah. Yeah. i don't know i don't remember what it was like four months ago but mm-hmm. also like it feels like it was just yesterday at the same time yeah, no, June. I know uh, June went by like a June like a flew. Week. June went quick. Yeah, and, um, and like we're already, we're already halfway through July. Like we're already halfway. Yeah, that's there. Like, that's weird. That's you know that's the only that's the only I guess uh, I was hoping you know summertime would go slowly, you know, because yeah. it never does. But no, even in these tough times, it seems to just you even, know go by in a flash. Unfortunately, even with nothing to do. It still goes by. It feels like it's gone by quicker. Like it's weird when yeah. you say halfway through July, and I'm like, "What the hell?" Right? Like, it just started. We just had like, Canada. We just yeah, had Canada. Like, it, yeah, <laughs> and it's gone. And the, uh, wow, this yeah. 2020 needs to. August, unfortunately, I hate to say it, but August is going to be even faster. Unfortunately, don't don't I don't do that. Wait. At least we have sport. At least we have sport to watch. At least there's a sport to watch in August. Like we have something to look forward to. So if it goes by fast, at least we're doing something. Yeah. The last three months have gone by fast. We can't do a damn thing. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing to do. Yeah. No, for sure. I'll take a, I'll take a fast month with sports on TV. hundred percent. Any day of the week. Yeah. Over a fast month with absolutely nothing on yeah, Take that ten, anytime. eleven times out of ten. Yeah, hundred percent. What was it like for you trying to get back into Canada, coming from mm. Italy, which was hit hard with yeah. COVID? Mm-hmm. What was what was that like for you to try and get back into Canada before everything kind of shut down? And uh, it was um, so like I remember, I remember specific days Mm -hmm. um so i think around like near the end of february i started to have some serious talks with my with my parents over this time and um because obviously i didn't i didn't really know about the current situation in canada right you know i could only see what was happening in italy um so they were just telling me how you know italy looks from the outside looking in italy looked pretty pretty bad like it looked like the worst country to be in you know so once once my parents told me that <coughs> I started to you know at, just put the idea out there to the team and stuff that hey like I'm I might be interested in like leaving like early um because this, this thing seems to be progressing yeah. a lot faster than anticipated um and uh yeah so I was I was trying to just like plant some seeds just to put the idea so it wasn't like a huge thing shock and, yeah and i did decide to leave mm-hmm. um so i think it was uh so i remember on saturday i think it was a saturday we had just uh we just had our first playoff game march 1st okay. which was a sunday and then the next day the 
the league uh, was suspended for 10 okay. days. Yep. Um, so as soon as I told my, my parents that, I got a, I got a quick call oh, from them of course. Yep. saying, um, you, you, need to, you need to come home. You need to get out because um, the problem's not going to be fixed in 10 days. No. You know, 10 days isn't going to, what's that going to fix? Yeah. You know, so, so once, once I told them that they were like, nothing, nothing it's not going to get better, mm-hmm. you know, and my fear wasn't like contracting the virus. It was not being able to leave and come back into Canada, especially mm-hmm. coming from mm-hmm. Italy, which right. was labeled as a original. Right. So that was my fear. So once I explained to the team, uh, like my, my concerns and stuff, they were a bit, um, I don't think they fully understood my perspective. Right. Um, Cause I mean the city um, that I was in is like down South. So okay. there wasn't that many, many cases in the area mm-hmm. that I was in. Mm-hmm. It was mostly up North, but um, I knew from like the outside countries looking in that if you're anywhere in Italy, like yeah. you're in a, it doesn't matter you're north south east west like you're in italy yeah. you're in a red zone right you know so fear fear will make make people do crazy things right as, as we can see obviously so yep. so i just I, I made a decision to leave and they were they weren't all for it unfortunately at the time yeah which I, I understood as well you know i mean but um so um, I had to leave within, I had to uh, book my flight, pack my bags within like a day or two. Jeez. And um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to um, fly directly back to to Canada on such short notice. Okay. So at the time, I was living with a teammate from London, England. Okay. Um, and they had a flight back there. So I just asked him if I could just post me up in your spot, like your house for a night. Yes, yeah. I just need to get out. I just need to get out of Italy, you know. So, so I flew to London with him. I stayed a night with him, mm-hmm. and then here's a little twist. So, oh, curveball. Okay. Yeah. So as of, so I'm sure most people, I guess, watching know that the Douglas men's team, they made nationals. And I was, they were number one seed. They were made yeah. nationals, which was being held in Toronto. Yeah. So I have lots of family in Toronto. I've been there many times. Okay. So the idea came, hmm, why don't I go surprise Douglas in Toronto for nationals? Oh. Right? Because they, okay. they had no idea of what like I was doing. Like I, I kept in contact with Joe and, yeah. and the coaches. So they knew my situation, but none of the players knew. Okay. Um, so I wanted to go and surprise them. I'm still close with well, – I was close with – pretty much the whole team from last year. Right. That'd be a cool thing. Just go and surprise them um, for nationals. So I get to Toronto and then I think like the second day I get there, nationals gets canceled. Oh. So I'm, I mean, I mean, I was there with family, so it wasn't that bad. Right. But, I mean, at that time, Toronto was, was like, there was nothing to do, you know, and that's true too. Like, yeah. When I got, yeah. So when I got that news, um i just wanted to just i just wanted to go back to vancouver like i i want to see my family i want i just want to be home i want to be home you know and um so i was i was in toronto for two weeks um so i saw i saw some of my family which was nice you know but still wasn't home no i was just i was itching to get i was itching to get back home so after two weeks i finally got to vancouver and yeah and then Jeez. one of the one of the most like, grateful, humbling, um, most relieved experiences like yeah. I've ever had. In my life. I... You know, it was Jeez. and it's crazy because um, I remember being at the airport in Italy waiting mm-hmm. for my flight to leave, and I I look on I've I was keeping myself updated with the the news in Italy, mm-hmm. and I saw literally I was at the airport and they had. Uh, shut down like the entire northern region of Italy. Like over oh. a million people were Jeez. like completely like you can't leave your house. You're locked in. Damn. You know. So it was just like day after day after day, and something significant came out. 
Yeah. And then I was just like, this hundred percent validates my decision to leave early. Oh, like, for sure. I had second thoughts. Like, and if the team had second thoughts, cause they were kind of against it at the yeah. time, I'm like you, you have to understand now, like, <laughs> you know, like I, like I knew this was going to get serious, seriously right. bad. So I'm just like, I hope you can now understand why I left when I did. Yeah. Because it just, you know, it all happened within like a week. Like, that was a scary yeah. thing. It just happened very, very fast. You know, so it was, it was very stressful. It was oh, very spontaneous. Yeah. I mean, if, if anyone that knows me, I'm very, you know, organized. I like to plan stuff. Oh and, God, this would have thrown yeah. you for a loop. Yeah. So that was most stressful, most spontaneous thing I've, I've ever done. Damn. Um, so, so right now, obviously it's a, it's a cool story to tell and yeah. uh, it was a great, it was a great experience. Yeah. Um, I learned, okay. I learned a lot just from that like week or two, just trying right. to get back home. You know, it yeah. just, it just added to the, to the crazy experience I had over there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, it just, it put, it Damn. Just, you don't, you don't know what you have until you don't have it. You know, right. that's one of the main things I, I learned when I was over there, especially, yeah. trying to get, you know, so. Yeah. You don't know what you have until it's gone. Yeah. And that's, tw- that's 2020. Yeah. Yeah. That, right. that's everything, a year, right? yeah. everything we had was taken. Anything that you even didn't even consider was mm-hmm. gone. And it's that perspective again, but at least obviously with nationals being canceled for Douglas and your surprise kind of going awry, mm-hmm. at, at yeah. least you are still in Canada and not yeah. Italy. Yeah. And yeah. I guess it would have been, obviously you were still with family, but it would have sucked to be, at least in my opinion, like knowing that you're so close to Vancouver Mm-hmm. But did you have to quarantine yeah. for two weeks? Is that why you were there for two weeks? I did. Yeah, I did. Uh, knowing that you're uh, so close. Yeah, I, my grandma was there as well, so I couldn't oh, see her. Okay. Yeah, so. Jeez. Knowing that yeah. you're so close, mm-hmm. yet so far. Yeah. I think, to me, I think being out of a country that was shutting down from top to bottom, a mm-hmm. little bit more of a peace of mind i think anyways mm. like absolutely yeah absolutely i was just i was uh, my teammate at the time from london we, we were just we were always talking about it and we we're just, just like out of all the countries we could have been playing in right now it just had to be the one that you know that we're playing right now Italy, the right? one that the one that you start your professional career yeah is the one that it's hit the remember hardest. we watched it from the outside they're just watching it just shut down mm-hmm. and that's just from the other i can only imagine like the yeah. stress of now were you the only canadian on the roster yeah yeah i was the only one from like overseas yeah from overseas yeah. coming this way yeah you yeah know, so, so then they all would have seen it and just been i see why they didn't understand mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. urgency to leave yeah yeah, and I didn't like I didn't I was just I was very stressed at the time, but oh. I especially now looking back, like I, I definitely understood why they would be you yeah. know, hesitant to it or they would just mm-hmm. they couldn't understand. Yeah. You know, and um but um as the weeks went on, like I've I've talked to most of the a lot of the guys on the team and the and the coach and the president and you know, they all they've all they all understand now, yeah. which is good. <laughs> I would um, hope so. Yeah, so like we've talked and you know there's no there's no hard feelings or anything like we're all we left on we left on good terms which is good that's so. that's good like obviously yeah. like hindsight's always 2020 but now like this is clear as day like this is what i was saying this is why i left and look what happened because mm-hmm. heaven forbid you didn't leave and then you had to stay in italy with yeah that would have yeah, that was that was my number one motivation. Like, I don't want to be stuck in a country where I don't really know anyone. Yeah. I don't speak the language. Yeah, probably couldn't find a job. Right. Um, and who knows how long I would have or could have been there? Like, 
right about, that's true like, like we were talking about that uncertainty before we're like we don't know how long this like you, quarantine social distance stuff's gonna go on you would you would probably still be there i could i very well could be i yeah. very well could be and anytime i'm having like a, a bad day or i think it's tough times i'm like yeah. I could easily be in a way worse situation right now. Like not even close. So could be, could be stuck just, in a country where you, like you yeah. said, you don't know the language. You just don't know anybody else outside of your teammates yeah. and just, yeah. So, you know, so life could be, life could be a lot worse, you know? Yeah. So that's just, yeah. that's what gets me through any tough day I'm having. So at least, at least you got your family with you now. It matters most. Yeah. That's, that's all you need. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to try this again. We talked about the name of the team <laughs> beforehand. Yeah. Saviva? Saviva. Saviva. See? There you go. There and you it's go. Pelicanestro Lucera. Yeah. There you Close go. Close enough. Yeah. Two or three. Yeah, those two. Yeah. Yeah. Two out of three. See, names over here are so much shorter. It's a lot easier. <laughs> um, where is where is that in Italy? Before I know you said it's down towards the bottom. It's south or east. south, yeah. southeast. Okay. So it's like two out. It's like two two hours east of Naples. Okay. I say okay, but I don't really know where that yeah. is. So I'm just uh, not even green for fun. At all. Yeah, if that helps. <laughs> just, yeah. Okay. Sure. Great. Southeast. Cool. Southeast. Let's okay. Go southeast. Yeah. What was what was the transition like for you going from college ball in Canada? to pro ball there because your career in the pack west kind of speaks for itself the all-time leading scorer you several all-stars just your resume just kind of speaks for itself and i know it's been discussed a lot over the years that you were there what was that transition like for you going from collegiate to starting your pro career in italy from a basketball standpoint it was uh the first I mean, when, when games started to happen, it was, it was a very tough transition. I think the biggest obstacle was the, the communication, you know, especially I was, I was playing point guard over there. I've always played point guard. That means I got to be the most vocal guy on the court. I'm used right. to being the most vocal guy on the court. I like being the most vocal guy on the court. So it was a lot of weeks of like learning my teammates and um, learning some of the different languages, just some okay. of the words that I would use um because i'm the one calling plays I'm right. the one you know running the show pretty much offensively and defensively mm-hmm. you know so it was my job it's my responsibility to make sure the team's on the same page mm-hmm. you know and coming to a team um with a group of guys that like i've never met i don't know their basketball history i don't mm-hmm. know what their skills are yeah. and uh i know i douglas <laughs> um and bc like i know i know I like to think I know like many of the players in BC. So yeah. even if a new guy comes over, I kind of know like how he plays and right. like things I can expect from him. Mm-hmm. So going to a team with guys that I have no background, no history of, um, oh, geez. I'm really starting from like ground zero with yeah. like all these new guys and me being in the most, in, one of the most important positions. It was a, uh, mm. it was a, a steep learning curve in the sense of learning guys' spots, learning where they like to get to their sh- get their shots, mm-hmm. um, verbal cues, right? Um, just stuff like that. That was probably the biggest obstacle. But I think um, as the games went on, I was getting more and more and more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, unfortunately, we weren't able to finish the season, right? Um, but we were. I, I'm confident in saying we probably would have won the championship had we continued playing. Okay. Um, so, oh, I didn't even mention the the refs. Oh boy, <laughs> that was a, the refs were because uh, I mean I'm not the one to even talk to refs. Okay. Like, I'll go kindly, respectfully go and talk to them. Like, right. Well, why Why did you make this call? Like respectfully, I'm not mm-hmm. a yeller. I'm not a streamer. Yep. Um, but. I mean, in Italy, um, there was one ref that actually spoke English, oh, which good. was nice. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it was just whatever the ref called. I couldn't half Could the time. Argue. I don't know why he made the call he did. I couldn't, right. you know, decipher what was going on in his head. It was just made the call. Okay, like 
that was it. I don't know why you made the call, but that was it. You know, so I couldn't really oh, have God. that relationship mm-hmm. with the ref. Um, because I know a lot of the refs in BC and locally. Like, I right. I know a lot of their like their names and stuff like that, and vice right. versa. Yeah. You know, so that was another thing. Um, and yeah, and then uh, and coaching was tough. Like um, like during timeouts and stuff. Oh. You know, he's, it's like the coach, his English wasn't that good. Okay. Which I expected. Yeah. Um, but it was just in a fast paced environment <laughs> in a timeout. We only got like 60 seconds. So oh, he's yeah. pulling out of play and I had to make sure I was with a, a teammate that, that spoke a little English. So okay. he could just translate everything the coach is saying <laughs> in a very short amount of time. Yeah. Just get you the keywords and the key points. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, so there was, yeah. it was a lot of, a lot of, um, different scenarios and situations I had to, mm-hmm. had to adapt to. Um, and it took, it took a few, it took a while to really like click in yeah. you know, and lock in with all that stuff. So, um, I mean, I knew it was going to be tough, but yeah, I mean, that's you, can't, true. you can't, pre- you can't prepare for stuff like that. No. I knew it was going to be tough, but you know, it was, I'm not going to lie. It was, it was very tough. And I'm a guy that um, like likes to know um, what's going on, what's happening at every right. single point in time. Okay. So it was a lot of, I had to have a lot of patience, mm. uh, mm-hmm. especially just with myself. Right. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a perfectionist. I like things done a certain way. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was just, it was a lot of, a lot of stuff like that. So um, but mm-hmm. I think it, yeah, it it helped me grow as a as a player, as a person. I learned yeah. a lot. Um, and yeah, no, it was it was good. Did you? It was, it was a good. It was a great experience. For sure. Did you try to learn any Italian before you went over? Yeah, uh, before I went over. Yeah. No, I was, no. was like I never like I took some French in high school, just like every kid. But right, I've never like fully like learned a full language okay so i was just you know i was being nice and like oh i'll be i'll be in italy like i'll pick up the language like it won't be super difficult once it's right. around me all the time but yeah yeah it was once I, was, I was over there it was it was i like i bought an online class and everything and i was okay. i was making some decent progress with just normal touristy stuff like terms and phrases Mm -hmm. um but it was once um uh so my teammate from london okay i was talking about earlier he he came in the second half of the year okay so from september to december i was on my own living on my own so i wasn't like i was pretty much uh going out for like breakfast and lunch like by myself pretty much so I really took it on myself to start learning the language so I can talk to the waiters and the owners right. of restaurants and stuff like that. Um, so that's when I was making some progress with the language. Yeah. But then once my teammate from London, an English speaking person, oh, and what came into my life, yeah. I was, I kind of, kind of dropped the, <laughs> the Italian because I had someone to talk to in English now. Right. I didn't really, there wasn't that need urgency that's that's valid yeah yeah you know so um yeah but once uh i didn't realize the importance of just having someone to talk to um Mm -hmm. i know before my my teammate came it was a lot of it was a lot of calls to friends a lot of calls to family you know which was nice but it's not it's not the same obviously no there's no personal connection right it's just over the phone or whatever like you can't physically be there with them there's he's missing that big personal connection yeah aspect mm-hmm. yeah. You know, and uh and never it just it put in perspective just like how important that is mm-hmm. um so it was it was good like a, i and he was he's a really cool guy like we still keep in touch yeah uh, we have a lot of similar interests which was nice okay um so yeah just having just someone to talk to <laughs> Um, on a day-to-day basis was, you know, it was, it was more important than like I ever thought it could be for sure. So what, so obviously the language being one of the biggest barriers on the other side, what's kind of been 
the best part of either living in Italy or playing pro ball in Italy? Kind of what's been the best or one of the better parts of taking um, your talents over there? Oh, I'll start off saying by quickly, the food was amazing. Oh, um, I, I love pasta and pizza and all oh, that stuff. So you know, fresh. I, I had a lot of there. Italian. Yeah. No, you haven't you haven't had pasta until you've had pasta. Until okay. Really now, did you learn that. to make your own while you were there? I no, I, I did not, unfortunately. Ooh. So I wasn't able to to take that skill back with me, unfortunately. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, I don't. The pasta I have here back home is it's nothing. It's Fails in comparison. Yeah, it's not even close. So <laughs> the food is great. Um, yeah. The weather was was really good, you know. I mean, especially being in Vancouver, where rain, Vancouver, where it rains a lot, <laughs> you don't get a lot of sun. Um, so the weather was really great, and um, I think the having just being around in that team environment again. I yeah. know when um, after I was done playing, um, I went and coached at Douglas for Joe the yeah. year after, mm -hmm. and. It was, I learned a lot, but at the same time, it was very frustrating because okay. I still, I still had those, those like athletic juices going. Like I want to mm. go out and do stuff. I don't want to watch other people play. I want to go play. Right. You no. Know, so it was great being in that environment again, okay. where you're playing, you're grinding with like teammates that are mm. all going towards the same goal. Right. Um, you know, all working towards the same thing. So that was, it was really, it was really great in getting back into that environment. Um, what else? I think looking back, it was, I had a lot of personal growth okay. from the experience and that was through a lot of challenges. Right. Actually. Like, I mean, I'll say right now, that's probably the most challenging thing I've ever done in my life, you know, yeah. but it was, uh, it taught me just a lot about myself mm -hmm. and I've always been, I've always had a family and friends and a healthy environment around me, a very mm -hmm. familiar environment around me. Right. And then I was thrown into this situation where pretty much every aspect is foreign to me. Um, it's very unfamiliar. So it pushed, it pushed me, it challenged me in ways I've never been challenged before. And through that, uh, like I've, I've grown so much, you know, personally from it. And that was, that was the main driving motivation. <laughs> I wanted to go play yeah. overseas. All, playing basketball obviously is great. Like I love the game. Right. I love but if I'm able to do that and become a better, more developed person from mm -hmm. it. That was one of the main things I wanted to say when I come back so yeah it was it was yeah it was it was one of the most like unforgettable experiences of my life and that's the main reason why I wanted to do that so it, it was it was good yeah it's always interesting like when you move for you across the ocean to Europe mm -hmm. like even if you just move anywhere out of town on your own yeah and you have it's you that you have to rely on. Like there's no one else around you. Mm -hmm. You learn so much about yourself so quick. Yeah. Because if you don't do it, or if you don't figure it out, it's not happening. No one's going to do it for you. Yeah. And no, and especially for you in the country with a different language altogether. Like for me, like I moved to Canmore, Alberta for two years, just, because to, to work in golf and whatever and no one else came with me and like I had family out there but didn't live with them didn't see yeah. them all that often you have to figure it out yeah quick or else it's yeah. not gonna go well yeah and at least for me everybody spoke the same language it was fine mm. but I don't think many people would move to Europe mm -hmm. and have that be their main goal to mm -hmm. figure out who they are or kind of learn who they are, come back as a 
more well-rounded person, I guess. Everybody would go play basketball first. Yeah. And take mm-hmm. whatever else comes with it afterwards. Mm-hmm. I don't think many people realize the personal struggles and challenges that go with yeah. playing basketball overseas or anywhere outside of your own mm-hmm. city for that matter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people overlook that part yeah. of it. Yeah. I think, um, you know, when you put, uh, like pro basketball and you, you hear those words and you have this vision right. of, of, you know, what comes with it. And, um, uh, it wasn't, there were some things like that weren't like, I had that same vision and it just wasn't like what I had pictured mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, like the biggest thing was I had a lot of, I had a lot of free time. I had a okay. lot of free time, more time than I had to, than I knew what to do with. Um, especially being in a, in a foreign country with, by myself, right. that was probably the worst thing that <laughs> the most challenging <laughs> part of it as well. Right. Yeah. So, um, it's not, I'll say to people, it's not as, what's the word? Uh, glamorous. Yeah, like it's not as like, um, yeah, glamorous to go with that. Yeah, it's not as glamorous as that think, vision that people think it is. Right. Um, like we were talking about, it's a lot of, uh, like there, it's challenging. Like there's a lot of personal challenges yeah. you have to go through. For I, that, think, I think people that. see the NBA and they think that's what it's everywhere. like everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, even close. Like even the G League probably is mm-hmm. not even close to what it's actually like. Yeah. What did you What did you do then in your spare time? With like, to me, like I wouldn't think you'd have that much mm. free time. But then again, I've never had right. pro aspirations in any sport, so I would have no mm-hmm. idea. What yeah. did you do in all your spare time then? Uh, and- when I wasn't doing anything basketball related, like I wasn't yeah. in the weight room, anything like that. Um, I went for a lot of walks. I did a lot of like sightseeing and stuff like that. Okay. Um, a lot of Netflix. Oh, a lot right. of Netflix. Um, a few late nights watching, watching the NBA games and stuff and watching right. CIS and Pac West ball and college ball and stuff like that. Right. Um, Another big challenge, a big obstacle was the time difference as well. Okay. Like, all the, like when I'm pretty much when I'm waking up, everyone's going to sleep and oh, vice damn. versa. Yeah. So okay. during the day, I didn't even, I couldn't even really talk to anyone back home because they're all sleeping Shit. when I'm awake. Right. So that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of Netflix, a lot of sightseeing walks, um, do do some guys get like a second job outside of basketball? Like, is that uh, I don't know what it's like if they some guys, some, yes, do guys did on the team that I was playing on. Uh, some guys had like full time day jobs as well. Oh damn! Okay. So, uh, yeah, so I just say a lot of them. Um, it's not like the basketball was their full time, like full mm. full source of income kind of thing, right? Um, so. I kind of use that as, okay, well, these guys, some of these guys are actually working and trying to make a living and stuff. So mm-hmm. I got to make sure that like, I'm here, I'm here just for one reason. That's to play ball and like produce. Right. That was the only reason why I was brought there. Right. So I pretty much tried to just devote as much time as I could to um, making sure I can perform at my best when I'm needed. Right. And so a lot of, a lot of film, a lot of watching tape, yeah, um, and just yeah. I mean, I think one thing I'm hoping for when I can hopefully go play again, that opportunity comes, um, is to go to a maybe like a more like a bigger city or where okay. more stuff's happening. Because the city right. that I was in, it wasn't. It was, it was on the smaller side, and there wasn't. Um, like it's not like a Vancouver or. A, right. That's a big. You know, it's a big drop off from Vancouver to yeah. small town Italy. Yeah, you know, so um I think that's one of the things um I would hope to get in my mm-hmm. next next experience that happens. So 
Um, is there, yeah, is, there yeah. is there a country that you'd want to play in? If you could pick a country to play in, have you? Is there anywhere you'd want to go? Probably Spain. Somewhere in Spain would okay. be. I've always, I've always, always wanted to go to Spain. Um, you know, like before, uh, before COVID hit, yeah. um, I was planning um, a, like a one week, ten day trip with my sister. Okay. Um, we we're gonna go to Prague and Poland. Um, and cause that's just some of the cities I'm, I'm overseas. So may as well, yeah, might as well see them, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, if I had to choose, I'd probably Spain. Cause that's always been on a, on my list of places okay. to go. So if I'm able to, you know, live there for free and play ball, like what, why not? Perfect, perfect scenario. <laughs> yeah. And you get to see the country that you want to see. Like it's, it doesn't get it's much, much better than that. So it's a win-win all around. Yeah, you know, so Spain, if I had a, if it was my choice, if I get the opportunity, Spain would definitely be a place to go for sure. I think there's, there's a lot of countries that your cities you could have picked that wouldn't be bad options. There's so many, so many places that most people will never get to see in their mm-hmm. lifetime. Like, mm-hmm. and it seems like all the countries are so close together. Like everything's just like kind of like right there. It's, mm-hmm. there's so much to see around each country that like i don't think yeah. you could have a yeah. bad and they're all choice they're all so different and they're all so different right like yeah. you, can, you can you can drive to country a couple of countries in a day yeah and you'll get a completely different experience every, that's every baffling country. to me yeah. like they're so small essentially you can yeah. just like you said hit two or three in a day and yeah like you do a one day trip yeah one country for breakfast, yeah. One for lunch, and it's completely different. And then you go one for dinner, and it's completely different. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be kind of fun. That'd be interesting. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely, I definitely see why backpacking in Europe is a thing. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially coming from Canada, where like there's so much land, you know. And yeah. That's you're true. Able to fill the land, you know, and then you go to Europe and. There's just so many countries in a small amount of space. Right. And when you get it, each one is different. So like yeah. we were going to, we're take, we're planning to take a train from Prague to the Poland. Yeah. And That's crazy. Yeah. You know, so hopefully, you know, when things calm down, I get right. the opportunity to go back and then I can fulfill some of the things that I wanted, I wanted to do. That Start wasn't able to, to do. Yeah. take off that bucket list a little bit. Yeah, that exactly. 2020 again put on hold and took everything away that we wanted to yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. A couple of questions came in on Instagram too. I think kind of fit into kind of how you've progressed into pro ball and kind of what got you essentially to play in Italy. Mm-hmm. What motivated you every day when it came to basketball? What was your driving motivation in the game? I was, it was just, like, I've, I've watched so much basketball and I think it was getting the opportunity to play. I even just, I'm not even talking like pro. It was yeah. opportunity to play post-secondary ball and okay. thinking about all the players that don't get that opportunity that would kill it would do so many things mm-hmm. to be in the position that I was in. Mm-hmm. Um, I almost felt like it was a it was a responsibility of me to make use of this opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, so with that in mind, I was I just I did not I didn't want to take it for granted because if I'm not gonna you know work my butt off and you know progress and make use like of this um, opportunity. Yeah. There's thousands of other kids and players that would, you yeah. know, and, you know, with that, just keeping that in mind, I just, I didn't want to waste any of it. I wanted to live in the moment and, you know, get as much out of playing as I could. You know, it was, you know, varsity basketball is one of the sports you can't play forever. That's true. You know, so it goes by quick, unfortunately. So, 
It's yeah. just the opportunity. When the opportunity is there, it's not gonna always gonna be there. So when right. it's there, you uh, you gotta make use of it and take it and run with it. it. Yeah. Was was playing? Oh, this is kind of off the cuff. Was playing pro always a goal for you growing up? To be honest, it it wasn't actually. Um, I picked up basketball at a, especially nowadays at a pretty late age. Okay. Um, I started in high school in grade eight. Um, and you know, I've, I always, especially when I was younger, I lacked the, I guess the, the bigger picture and looking long-term, mm-hmm. like I want to try to get here. Right. I was kind of just like secluded and oh, the here and now kind of thing. Right. Um, so as, um, as I was getting older, like I only had Douglas was the only school that was, um, that was interested in me. Okay. Um, so even with that, like I came from Fraser Heights, like it's not, it's not known for its basketball, mm-hmm. you know? So I was an unknown like freshman coming into college. Okay. So I had to really work my way up and, you know, improve and learn the game and stuff like that. So, <coughs> excuse me. um, yeah, it wasn't playing after college wasn't really a like a thought for me until maybe my end of my fourth into my oh, fifth really? year. Maybe. Okay, wow. yeah, like didn't really. I was I was there to play ball because I love it. I love the team aspect. I love everything about it, yeah. and also to get a degree, to finish school. Mm-hmm. Those are my main two things. You right. Know, you know, it was, it was student athlete. Like student came first. I was there for right. school, finished school. I get to play ball on top of it. Like that was just that. Yeah. It wasn't until um, like other players and friends or ever thought about playing, playing pro somewhere and mm-hmm. like that. I had I never really, even really thought of it. Damn. And um, I started to ask around and like look around and there's, I couldn't believe how many different leagues there are. It's but crazy. I couldn't believe like there's like just, hundreds of leagues and like seems like every country has a league yeah not just like one like they have nah. tiers they have levels and yeah. every single country I, I couldn't believe what i was seeing when i was looking into it you know so um yeah so i mean to to see all that all those different opportunities there then i started yeah. to okay let's try to see if we can you know work towards that kind of thing yeah you know, so I started uh, asking around former opponents, teammates, coaches, um, like what I need to do to kind of make this happen kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, hopefully I was, I was able to get in contact with people and yeah. made it happen. So to answer the question directly, eh, yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't always a, it was a thing on my mind for sure. Okay. So. I think, a lot, like again, like you went in to Italy with the mindset of growing as a person, coming back as a well-rounded human being, individual. Mm-hmm. I think hearing you say that it's student first and then athlete, I find too many athletes now go into it with the athlete mindset first. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I was a little bit kind of happy to hear student athlete and you say student first because i don't know how many people these days it's basketball or football or whatever and they scrape by with with their academics just because and Mm -hmm. because they think the game's going to be around forever no it's not it's not gonna be yeah Yeah. so too many people lose sight of the student athlete part of it the the student part Mm -hmm. so yeah, I just had to, I mean, had to point that out. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, especially nowadays, there's there's just so many there's so many yes, athletes or players that you know are just getting by through school just to play the sport. Yeah, I mean, it's, I I love kids that love the game or whatever they're playing. Yeah. I love the passion. I love that. But, but it's if you're going to school. Right. It's school. You're not getting paid to do this. Like it's school. You're you're paying, you're paying to be there. You're paying to be there. Yes. You know, so, and like you were saying, like, okay, playing, unless you're, you know, got a realistic shot at playing NBA or actually doing this for a living, right? you know, clock's going to run out on your body. And yep. then what are you going to do? Then what's your plan B? Like, exactly. 
you like you said you had teammates that were working full time day jobs in Italy mm-hmm. to p- pay for their living so they could play professional yeah. basketball. If you're going yeah. over there to play pro to make a living, you can do it, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's not easy. Yeah. And if you don't have that it backup is. plan, like one freak injury and you're done. That's all it takes. Yeah. What do you fall back on? No. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. You literally have to start over. So, yeah, yeah that was – that was really a thing when I was, I was, I was coaching for Douglas that one year and I was just, I, I didn't stress something more than the student part, go to class, that's do your why, assignment. Like, that's why it's first. Like, yes. It's called student athlete. Yeah. Student comes first. You're, you know, pay, you're paying to be a student and yeah. the athletics is it's the a bonus privilege. It's not a right yeah. that can mm-hmm. be taken away and you're still paying to go to school. So yeah. do Absolutely. the work for what you're paying for. Yeah. And then you can play sports. Mm-hmm. You don't pay to play sports at a school and then not do the work you're actually paying to do. Yeah. And then wonder why your sports got taken away. Well, it's pretty simple. Yeah. You didn't go to class. Yeah. You, you got to do perform the classroom. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. How did you, you mentioned your point guard. And you've always been a point guard, yet you still ended up with the all-time scoring record. Yeah. How did you balance scoring and playmaking and everything else a point guard has to do? Well, I mean, it's kind of funny when I look back at it. It's uh, I've always been a, a pass-first guy in – Really? Can you believe that? Like I've always, I much rather again assist than score okay. myself. Okay. Like, ten out of ten times, you know, and that was that was my same thinking even going to my freshman year. Um, okay. Yeah. So I think it was my my first year. I really had to step up in terms of scoring the ball. Mm-hmm. You know, and that kind of like, pushed me into towards that that scoring point guard role. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially the game nowadays, like you, point guards got to be able to score now. Especially right. that's true. Like now, like in the sport, you know. So I think it's part of being a point guard is you got to be you got to be the smartest guy on the floor, in my opinion. Right. You have to know um, pretty much your spots, other guys' spots. You have to know pace of the game. You have to know what's needed, when it's needed, mm-hmm. how you're going to get it. Um, I think. Being a point guard, in my opinion, is the most important position. Hundred percent. You know, if you're if you're not running the ship, a tight knit ship, it's you know, it's, it's not going to go well for you. It's not you know? going anywhere. The responsibility to make sure everyone's on the same page. So I think it's you have to you have to study the game. Like I've always been a believer in you know you you never know it all. Like yeah. I've always. You know, a lot, watch a lot of film, watch, just watch the game and learn the game, be a student of the game. You know, especially being a point guard, you have to, you have to know, you know, be able to make reads on, okay, do I need to step on my scoring? Do I need to shoot a little bit more? Mm-hmm. Or um, maybe this guy, um, you know, he's lacking on defense, maybe because he's not getting enough touches. Right. You know, maybe something like that. So it's, you have to be able to read your teammates, read the game, knowing when to step up and take more shots or mm-hmm. to, you know, find open guys and look, be a little more pass first. Mm-hmm. Um, so I made it like my, uh, I guess one of my goals was to be the smartest person on the court, whatever court I step on. Right. Because uh, once I knew that, I'd be able to, I guess – um manipulate how the game was going and knowing what um i needed to do to get be let my team be successful you know yeah. so i would say just yeah learn as much as you can you never know enough um that's true and you'll be able to, you'll be able to make the right reads if, you know, when you need to so i think you can apply that to anywhere if you go into it thinking you know everything you don't. You are not 
as smart as you think you are. Like, yeah. It's a humbling moment to say mm. the least. I think there's some people out there that need to hear that you can never not learn enough. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. You can always, <laughs> you can always learn more. I should have just let's have that. Yeah, absolutely. You, if you think you know everything, Jesus, you are the farthest thing from it. Yeah, absolutely. Take the blinders off and just listen. Yeah. You'll be surprised at what you can learn. Yeah. Absolutely. This one came from a former opponent All right. of yours. Lay it on me. Asking how you, f- how it felt, or yeah, I guess how you felt to play the Camosun Chargers. What was it like to play Camosun? Was it, uh, would this be Scott by any chance? No, it was not actually. Oh, it wasn't. Okay. Uh, Camosun. Um, it was a, it was a player on the team as well. Okay. Um, I would say probably when I think Camosun, I think probably the most physical team I play out of my experience there. Um, like I know, I know the head coach pretty well. Like Scott and I are friends, and um, yeah, he his teams were always very. They hit. They probably took the weight room more seriously than any other program. Okay. Yeah, like they were always very physical, very aggressive. They were grinded out guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so knowing that, um, when, you, when you're stepping into the gym with Camos, and you're gonna you're gonna be in a battle. Like you're gonna end up with some bruises, with some bumps. You know, you gotta you gotta go match their physicality and and okay. take it to them. You know, because they're right. they never, you know, they never back down in terms of physicality. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we've had a one of my five years. We had a lot of. I think we were probably pretty even. You know, throughout my at least my five years there. Okay. You know, and our, there's a lot of games where. You know, a lot of a lot of bodies on the floor, yeah. a lot of hard fouls. Uh, yeah, just a lot, a lot of sore bodies the next day. Okay, that's fair. Uh, I'll say it like that. So, um, uh, but no, probably the biggest thing I respect is how they they prepared. You know, okay. they took the weight room more seriously than probably any other team in my experience, and I think that's such an important thing for playing right. at the secondary level is oh, for sure you're playing against grown adults you know man yeah. when you're playing against adults especially know, with school. with no age limit really yeah yeah you, sometimes yeah. you're gonna have 17 18 19 year olds playing against 25 26 27 there's a guy in ontario that was 38 at one point yeah. <laughs> like yeah good luck you're, you know, it's a different – you're playing against grown men, you know, and grown women. Yeah. You know, so that's one thing I, I really respected about about their okay. program. Okay. That's uh, – I'll tell you after who it was that you can okay. <laughs> razz them or whatever you need to do. Last one before we wrap it up for you. All right. Who – did you idolize in basketball growing up? You obviously you said you got a late start in it. Who was mm-hmm. your – basketball idol oh well, i'll either i'll get praise for this or a lot of heat but uh i'm a i'm a lebron guy i've always been a i've always been a lebron guy um okay ever since the uh since like high school like his high school right. since he started in high school i just the biggest thing i respect about him is that he's i think he's um known as the most well-rounded player probably yep. of all time yep. you know we can we can always talk about the goat debate however you yep. want to do it that can, we can have our own podcast about that we could have we'll have to do another one for that just michael or brown <laughs> i could go on for yeah hours but uh i think i respected um his ability to just impact the game in so many different ways mm-hmm. and i think um like thing that separates basketball from so many other sports is that there's so many different ways you can impact the game and most of them are are, they're not even like statistics you know there's so many different ways to impact the game without you know being a leading scorer leading rebounder (coughs) this man there's so many different ways you can impact the game and you know when I was growing up 
you know, I was watching LeBron and he's just his overall impact on the game yeah. was just, you know, that's what really um, put him at the, at the top for me, who I was, I was looking up to. So you, you want to talk about quick him. He's been in the league, what, 17 years now? No. 2000. When did he come out? 2003? 2003. Yeah. That went by quick. Yeah. <laughs> That's a quick 17 year yeah. career. And yeah. like he's 35, gray hair, mm. and still, still getting it done. Doing what he does. Like yeah. I don't like you said, I don't think there's any dispute on him being the most well rounded player. Mm-hmm. Still I'm guessing you take LeBron in the GOAT debate too. I mean I mean, yeah, but that's that's me, you know. I mean, that's fair. There's so many. Like, if I if I was born in the '80s, I'd probably say I'd probably think differently. I'm more to the nine, born in the '90s, and I still say the same. I still say Michael. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, however, there's just so many, just different generations. They're different players, and you know. So okay. I don't, I don't like, I don't even bother, you know, trying to. Like, no. be my case. like it's just my personal opinion that's you fine know, I'm not, i don't know at all like we were talking about before you know i you know some guys <laughs> respect the like some guys think kobe's the goat just because he had that killer yeah ruthless you know, like dog and kind of i don't thing, know right? i don't know i don't think he's in the top two. Oh yeah i mean i don't think so either you know but uh that's fair. Just, i mean like, people can have their opinions yeah you know and you know, you're not, I mean, everyone's, I guess, wrong. No one's right. I guess, yeah. We'll never have a right answer, which should make, that's kind of the fun of it all. Nobody, you don't get a right yeah. answer. It's interesting yeah. to hear people make some arguments for people that, yeah, whether no it's business. basketball or not, that are just way yeah. out there. And mm-hmm. you're just like, where, why, what, why? What happened? Yeah. Where does it come from? Yeah. There's, there are opinions. And then there's whatever you just said, like that <laughs> yeah. should not have happened. He Good shouldn't be in the conversation or whatever it is. Right. But okay, yeah. we will. Uh, we can agree to disagree. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. There's I, nothing wrong with that. And a lot of again, a lot of mine depends on. It's not even basketball related. If LeBron ruins Space Jam, if <laughs> number two just got, tanks. Uh, mm. Or not even just tanks, just ruins it for any '90s kid mm. ever. That's yeah, going to leave a sour taste, yeah, on his legacy. Yeah, I mean, so it's a big yeah. shoes to fill. And yeah. MJ was, yeah, first one was, you know, like there was nothing wrong with it. So I yeah, don't know it, why they need to yeah. remake it and do a second one. Just. Yeah. Let Space yeah. Jam be a one movie. Yeah, what's wrong with just one series or whatever you want to call it? Just yeah. a one off. Yeah, you're um, playing with you're playing with fire. LeBron, LeBron's got enough money. He's got enough attention. He does not need like mm-hmm. they don't. It doesn't need to happen. No, they're yeah. just they're just playing with fire that they don't need yeah. to. Yeah. They should have listened to their mothers when they were kids. Don't play with fire. Yeah. Don't ruin a good thing. Because yeah. there's a lot of people kind of in that 90s era mm. that are going into that thing with a fine tooth comb. And if anything is off, they're, they're killing them for it. And yeah. social media is never around now. And it wasn't around in 1996 or whenever it came out. Yeah. Pretty ruthless. Yeah. Yeah, like I already, I already know what's. I already know like people are gonna find some bad with it, and then it's gonna be another reason to bash oh. LeBron. And it's just, I already know what's gonna happen. It's either gonna, gonna be really good or really yeah. bad. I don't think there's any kind of. Oh, that was okay. Like, no. It's either really good or really bad. It's either it meets number one or fell way short. Yeah, I don't for, think there's a way. To, I don't think there's a way to top it. But yeah. I mean, I'll go into yeah. it with an open mind. Yeah. <laughs> That's Maybe. all you can ask. That's all you can ask. But uh, yeah. hopefully we get pro basketball back so you can 
get back on the court, whether it's yeah. Italy, Spain, mm-hmm. wherever the next opportunity comes, and hopefully you can play a full season. Yeah. yeah that, some wood that, that we don't have another global pandemic mm-hmm. because 2020 has taken us for a ride. I just want to, I want to get off. I don't, I don't want to be on this ride anymore. Yeah. It's not, it wasn't fun. It hasn't been fun. It's never been a fun. So no, let's just fast forward to 2021, get us mm-hmm. or at least to August, get us our pro sport back. And then yeah. it feels yeah. like it's calming down a bit. Yeah. I got some normalcy. Yeah. But uh, no, Graham, I want to thank you for doing this. It was a ton of fun to hear about Italy and glad that you got back safely and didn't get stuck in a country where you don't know anybody. (laughs) Don't speak the language. That's sounds like a nightmare through Italy right now. Finding it out. So I, you, we probably would have done this. I don't know how many times over if you were still in Italy, just for (laughs) someone else to talk to. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah all right yeah definitely but, but uh, uh no thanks thanks for having me really appreciate it anytime and anytime you want to do this again if you get bored in vancouver or you get back overseas and you need someone to talk to we'll uh, we'll make it happen do it again sounds good uh, 